And to talk more Brexit with me now is the Shadow International Trade Secretary, Barry Gardner. Welcome to the programme. Thank you for coming back. Um, so we were learning there about all the different baskets, full alignment and regulatory alignment. Labour have said you want to keep all the benefits of the single market. So presumably you want to stay as much in alignment with the single market as possible as we do already. Well, what we said actually is, is that the government said that they could have all the benefits and we're going to hold them to that because but in that's order the, to do that, we need promised. to stay, put most of, most of what we can in the full alignment basket. Well, look, we, we want to make sure that we get as much of the benefits or that we currently have once we've left the EU. That, that makes perfect sense. You can't because do that we, and diverge a lot. I mean, no, it's either or. Ab absolutely. That's the point. Divergence from that, whether it's through a trade deal with another country um, or whether it's simply because we want to deregulate our, our standards in the UK, is going to cause a problem uh, with maintaining the sort of trade that we have with Europe. It's going to cause that economic problem. But we want to make sure that we have a Brexit that is for jobs, for the economy, uh, and that's why we see the benefits of the single market, we see the benefits of a customs union, and that's why we said we wouldn't rule those off the table, whereas the government precisely said it would. And and that's the red lines that Theresa May put in place that are now causing her all these other problems. But they cause a few problems in policy for the Labour Party as well, because the closer you want to stay to single market rules, if we have left the single market, because that's the government policy, the more alignment we have, that's us accepting rules that we had no say in making. A situation you yourself has described as being a vassal state. Yes, absolutely. Look, th these are the issues that we really do have to resolve. Um, because you're quite right, once we leave the EU and we're not a member of the EU, that means we're not a member of the single market. Doesn't mean we can't actually trade into the single market. Of course we can. And um, we can do that in the same way as Norway's done. But our economy is very different from Norway. And what we need to be sure about is when we're making our rules in this country, um, we are doing it as close as possible to maintain the trade and the economic benefits that we get with the European Union. Now, there have been reports this week that the Labour is working on a policy that would involve staying in the customs union. This morning so, on sorry, the Robert Peston that, programme that, on ITV. That could not be the case because, uh, and sorry to correct yes. you on a technicality, but once you leave the European Union, you leave the treaties and it's the treaties that create the customs union. So we could not be a member of the customs union. But you could union. be a member of our customs and, union, and which is what Jeremy Corbyn was talking about this morning on the Peston programme on ITV. I, he said that there will have to be our customs union with the EU. Sorry, yes, he was talking about the transition period immediately after we leave the European Union. That's been our position for, for many, many months. We were the ones that said in that transitional period, we want to maintain the status quo. We want to maintain things that are basically, we want to be the customs union and the single market during that transition period. Okay, well, let's talk about the future after the transition period. Right. But first, let's take a quick look at what you said you thought the consequences of being in the customs union after we leave the EU would be. So that's, uh, we can see it here as a transitional phase, a customs union agreement might have some merit, but as an end point, it's deeply unattractive because it would preclude us from making our own independent trade agreements. You still agree with that? Um, what I was specifically referring to, and if you go back on that quote just a little bit, you'll find that we are talking about the Turkish situation, which was a customs union agreement with the EU. And of course, that would be a very bad end point for us to be in, because it would mean that the European Union ended up doing all the negotiations for trade for the UK. We would have to open our markets to any other country they did an agreement with, but that country perhaps the United States, would not have to liberalise its markets and open themselves up to our goods and services coming in there. So, so, yeah, so it's, it's the, common, the common commercial policy is what governs all of this and it binds us in with these trade treaties. The UK government, Theresa May's government, say they want to leave that. Is that Labour's position? Sorry, we, we will be leaving... You, you, say, you say we're leaving anyway. Would you like to join something similar once we're no longer members of the EU? I, I, I've already said to you, Sarah, we believe that the benefits of what we currently have should be maintained as much as possible, and that means that whilst we cannot stay in the customs union, we should not have a Turkish-style customs union agreement, because that would be an asymmetrical relationship with any trading partner. 
what we, we do see as a possibility, and it's what we have not ruled off the table, that is to stay, uh, to, not to stay, to have a new customs union, a, a new customs union with the European Union. And that is something very interestingly, which in paragraph uh, 31 of the uh, cross-border trade and taxation bill that came in on Monday, um, by the government and that we debated then, they have actually put provision for that, a new customs union yes, where you, we would be an can, equal but, member. But you cannot possibly believe that you can have the benefits of being in a reformed customs union relationship with the EU and still have total freedom to make new trade deals. And you yourself no, have said that you absolutely. don't want anything that precludes us from making independent trade agreements look, with some of our bigger trading partners. Look, what, what, what I, let's be clear about what the, the nexus of problems we're trying to solve here uh, and, and work our way through. Y you have uh, within the referendum um, it's clear that people were voting for certain political objectives whether that was in terms of immigration, whether it was in terms of regaining sovereignty, uh, whether it was in terms of simply not paying money into Europe. All of these were things that people thought they were voting for. Now if you were to be in a relationship in which some of those continued to be the case, where we were rule takers and not rule setters, where we were being given directives, as, as Norway is at the moment, and told you've got to comply, even though you had no, no right to decide what the rules were going to be, that's a political problem which many people in this country would feel, well, what was the referendum all about if, if we don't achieve that? Now, what we okay, have, okay, no, no, so just, let, just, let, just let me add a break because otherwise it, I don't think it's clear the, the problems that we're trying to solve. What we're trying to do is to maintain the maximum economic benefit to get the economic benefit and the jobs that currently we get from the trading relations we have in a customs union yes. and in a single market with, with the European Union. But to do that respecting the referendum will of the okay, people for we, those political objectives. We, un we understand that point. Let Labour let has to bring back. No, the 52% yes. and the 48%. This government says we're we, just no, fighting no, for the Barry 52%. Gardner, we, we understand we're trying that to fight and for and the I whole need country. I to move you on to, to, to yeah. something else and talk, talk about uh, other internal Labour Party matters. We've heard the new Tory chairman, Brandon Lewis, today say that if any Tory, that he wants new Tory candidates to sign up to a respect pledge that they will um, conduct themselves on Twitter and in what they say in a respectful way, otherwise they will be uh, removed from of the candidates that's list. Right. And, 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 and Jeremy Corbyn of said he agrees that right. Labour should do that too. Which does raise some questions, of course, about some Labour MPs. Um, Jared Amara, for instance, who's had the whip suspended. Who has been not suspended sure from the party whilst an investigation is being conducted as is appropriate within all the procedures of our party. Absolutely right. Suspended because of remarks he made about women sexist and, and homophobic comments that he made and that discipline should be taken. But then you look at the Shadow Chancellor Don, John MacDonald against whom no action has uh, been taken um, and it, he's, he's said a number of things but one of them which has been heavily criticised is that he wanted to, well, that he agreed with people who wanted to see Esther McVeigh who was right. then working Pension Secretary Lynch. So let me pause for a second because we've actually got the audio of this. Let's have a listen to it and then we'll ask you about it. I was up in Liverpool a fortnight ago where they've launched, Alec McFadden, one of our organisers, has launched the um, Sack Esther McVeigh Day. Yeah. On, her, on her birthday. Yeah. And it was a pack, I spoke at a packed public meeting, it was absolutely packed, but there was a, a whole group in the audience that completely kicked off, quite critical of the whole concept, because they were arguing, why are we sacking her, why aren't we lynching the um, and obviously he used a word there that, we're, that we won't be um, uh, saying on TV, but is that respectful language? Did that pass a respect pledge? No, it's certainly not language I would have used. Um, earlier today, you have been quoting uh, remarks that were used by the, uh, by the President of the United States, which are deeply offensive yes. and deeply unacceptable. Yes. Um, uh, and, yeah, and, and you, hang on. But this and, is about and, the Labour Party yes, and about indeed. whether your people match you up to these them. standards. What, the point I'm making here is that he was quoting what somebody else said. Now, I, I would not have chosen to quote that because I... Oh, uh, but he was clearly quoting it with approval. He wasn't right. reporting now, it. Now let's, now let's look at the underlying issue which the Conservatives have been trying to cover up by all the smear on, on, on John MacDonald. The underlying issue is that Esther McVeigh is somebody who was a Department of Work and Pensions Minister and at a time um, when she was uh, in charge of Work and Pensions as a Minister, um, 
her company had been reported for breach of health and safety guidelines. She is one of the ministers, uh, and, and, no, and for that reason, no, but Jeremy for that Corbyn reason, himself said it wasn't she about was in we charge stick to of the, the regulations and use respectful language. Yes, that indeed. wasn't respectful language. And that's what language. I'm doing now, and I'm trying to make the underlying political point about what's going on here, because the res she was in charge of a department in which she was responsible for health and safety when her own company that she was a director of, McVeigh, J.G. McVeigh okay. Construction, um, they had been uh, uh, suspended, their work had had to be suspended twice within three months for breach of those health and safety guidelines, putting workers uh, at risk in her own company. Now, well, no, she no, is we're, also we're somebody... We're out of time. We'll have, you managed to make the point, but we'll have to leave it there.